Hey, it's late like the chips, and I started off with a nine to five, quit my job, and started reselling, and that went from that to this to this to this, and yeah, I'm just trying to show y'all different ways to make income, money, and my life, and what I do. Chips, yeah. I'm actually in my office right now, um, getting stuff together for this Randolph Street Market. It's actually located in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, ended up learning about it through somebody I was vending with. Shout out to her and her store as well, because she, she definitely looked out. But uh, I'm basically prepping for it now. Kind of got some of the stuff behind me. I got like crew neck sweaters, a couple things for you. I got a couple different items. You know what I mean? I got stuff like this. You know what I mean? That's pretty unique. for this right now i'm running a little bit behind usually i don't be too far behind when it comes to this stuff but things happen i always tell people when you're going through stuff mentally it will pass the time will always pass so there's really nothing that you can initially do but do work and keep yourself focused and try to keep your mind off of it or talk to somebody that helps too as well so i also got a decent amount of t-shirts and like button-ups. I got at least like 140. And then I got my special rag, which is the one for 15 at the top. And at the bottom is one for 10, three for 25. At the top is one for 15, two for 25. And I got the homie Chris, shout out to my man Side Hustle as well. I'll put his uh, link in the bio as well so y'all can give him a follow. So we're gonna go. We're leaving Friday morning, so we can get there by you know, Friday night. It takes about seven hours for us to get there, which ain't too bad at all. It seems like it's a, a decent market, something like the neighborhood flea. So I should have you none know, nap times, two or times, three or something like that, just because of the population that they have out there. So it should be a good turnout. I got a feeling this won't be a good turnout. I can't even say it should be. It's going to be a good turnout. But, uh, yeah, so I'm bringing a wide array of stuff, all types of items for real, for real. And even looking over, just seeing this sticker. <laughs> Shout out to Thriftcon, which is funny. But, uh, yeah, I'm bringing a wide array of stuff. I'm debating if I'm going to, well, I just got another rack as well. So I'm about to set that up to put the jeans on there. And I'm also going to put, uh, I'm going to put jeans on there, but on the second rack, I'm going to put some more crew necks and outerwear because I am just keep bumping in the stuff that I almost forgot about. That's crazy. I got like this 50s jacket. I'm about to show you guys. It's hard as hell for real. I'll be having stuff like this just laying around. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pretty dope jacket. Like, you got the chain stitch, if you guys don't know what that is. This is like 50s, 60s, I believe it's the 50s. Got the tag. Yeah, here's the tag. I had to clear up a little bit. But I do have to wash this before I do anything. As you can see, you see a little bit of fat on it. Did you see that all on it? But the reason that I brought you guys on here today, I wanted to talk about the initial attempt of I know some people they be scared to do outlets and markets that's not in their city but I feel like you doing outlets out of your city you doing stuff out of your city makes it more beneficial for you because yes definitely solidify yourself in your city or in your state but all at the same time this is only 1% of the world that knows you or that will know you or might know you so, you getting out to travel to see different places, different things, different people, that gets your name out there even more. When people see your name or they uh, see you doing events, they might want to come stop past in your city. Or when they see you come back in their city, they want to stop past at your booth. I 
another way that this will help you networking too is let's say you have a shop here like a brick and mortar or let's say you have an online website but you have an either or this will build your customer base and then you're having customers from different cities following you which will basically turn them into consistent customers if they like the stuff that you have so that's another reason why i stated to myself like i can't put myself in one bracket because i want to go to different places so people can see what i bring to the table like love my city and stuff that that I'm doing i do a lot of events actually out here and, and like just by myself i hold it down but i also want to be able to market myself in any way possible for me to help build capital and for me to do different stuff because some people have a different end goal for me it's really not getting a shop that's really not my end goal this is part of you know, like my fab step plan my nose is itchy sorry y'all but my fab step plan which I, I don't really feel like talking about right now but it's just one partake one step in my plan for real, for real. in all reality of all the stuff that i'm trying to do in my life yeah i don't know why my nose is so itchy it's because my that jacket that's just like flung it all over the place but it does need a good wash before i set it up because i gotta do it real hopefully you guys see the oh that was crazy hopefully you guys see the real before the randolph street mortgage because i should be dropping this friday so you guys should see it because i'm going to take a picture of like three to four things or do a real three to four things that are from 70s 60s and the 50s that i got that i'm going to be bringing that uh, not people would like to see but <clears throat> bless me Woo. so what i'm about to do now is actually get together my next z-rack so i could put some more <clears throat> so i could put some more outerwear up so i can see what it's going to look like and then after that tag most of my stuff is tagged but i'll tag the rest of my stuff if that so called makes sense I'll make sure that everything is tagged yeah, yeah i shouldn't have flung that jacket around jesus christ i did want to show you guys this portrait that i found not too long ago it's pretty cool yeah this portrait is pretty dope what it says on it is my head is full of children and it has all types of kids on there i believe this was a book back in the day artist name i believe is kiki sanchez i believe that's her name don't quote me or i'll put the name uh in the bio i mean not in the bio i'll put the name like down bottom in the description or something but yeah shout out to her it's a pretty cool portrait i really don't sell painting so if it is art usually i try to collect them and keep them so i'm gonna keep this one Some of the jeans over here, I got jeans behind this, this rack over here that are clean that I have to uh, source, not even source, I just need to put them on and tag them. And then I got like all the stuff that I ended up taking off of the hangers from the event before. And I think the next thing that I'll be doing is, like I said, putting some more outerwear on the next rack. About to get to it. Like I said, if anybody does think about doing events, all you gotta do is not, 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 not events in your city. But Alexa, restart timer. But but not events in your city. I'm talking about as in like events that are uh, events that are out of town. Just weigh your options, weigh your expenses out, calculate how much it's gonna be, how much you perceive to make. It makes a difference so you don't just be doing events and then you crashing out. I didn't did that with an event before. I'm not going to state what event it was, but I went to the event and the expenses overweighed my profits and it was just like not beneficial. I didn't really meet too many people, so it wasn't like a big, big networking event either. It was more so like store shopping for their store, which I kind of don't like, honestly. I like the events when it's actual shoppers shopping for their stuff for to put in their closet, not stores that want to put stuff in their store because 
most of the time they're going to try to lowball you or do some weird stuff, and I don't be for that bullshit. So make sure it's the right market. Make sure it's the right people. Make sure you get the right intel. Make sure it's not out of your budget range so you can perceive and make a profit. But this is things that you guys do need to think about just because, like, you want to weigh your options with anything that you want to do. Like, even when it comes down to, let's say, you want to uh, network online. All right, and you got store, you got a store, an online store, or you got eBay, or you got Macari, or you got Grail, or you got Poshmark. This is the way that this will help you spread the word to your customers for them to come see what you have for sale at all times. Or when they do see that you're in their town, that they will come shop with you. So that's just my intel, my opinion on certain things. I wouldn't state it as facts, but I see that it works. I try to do as much research as I can. And also, you do got to take a, a leap of faith, but the right leap of faith. Like I said again, don't just be jumping into it <laughs> with your head down, not knowing what's going on. Because you will bust your head. <laughs> just make sure that you do strate- move strategically. Figure out the information that you need to know. Even look at YouTube University. There's so many videos like the one that I'm making now. So you can look up what you need to bring. How you uh, move around in the city. Like, I'll even state, like, how I basically do things when I go out of town. For one, I rent out a truck. Because a lot of rental places, unfortunately, if y'all don't know, they won't tell y'all. They won't let you hitch a trailer to their stuff. So, I can't hitch a trailer. The issue with me not being able to hitch a trailer is I can't bring as much of stuff that I want to and still have room in the car for X amount of people. Let's say I wanted to bring six people. Now I can't bring six people because I can't hitch my trailer on. So you want to make sure that you got a decent amount of people that you know that's coming. Uh, another thing too, you can split the cost within the hotels. If it's more than one hotel or if it's a hotel and somebody take the floor or somebody take the couch, somebody take the pullout bed, somebody else takes a bed, like however, however, it, however clever it is for you guys. But that way you just put the cost for that as well so it won't be as much so your expenses between that and the rental will only be about two hundred dollars each for each person if it's more than four people then you're looking at about excuse me about none like 150 to 100 dollars because you're splitting the, the cost up with everybody else now that's not including gas you got to put that in the expense too so if you're staking gas too you're looking at another 300 dollars because everybody can pitch in for gas to get wherever you need to go which is not bad let's say that you're putting in for you to pay for a slot see how much the slot is slot might be a hundred dollars two hundred dollars if the slot if you're putting in a hundred two hundred dollars and it ends up coming out to be like let's say so you end up spending like four or five hundred all together all together and if you can double that money that's you making your money back plus more or if you could triple that money so you can make 1500 you still came out on top now when you do go back make sure that you got a list of what you're taking care of too as well so you just don't okay all right i got this money i'm about to spend it on this 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 and this no pay some bills out or handle what needs to be handled invest back into your company instead of just coming back home and spending the bread on millennial shit that's pretty much all that I got to say for now. So for the next video, you will see none of the process kind of of me going up to Chicago and the day before I set up for Chicago. And then next Friday, you'll actually see what I did in Chicago. I might drop it on Monday though. Mess around. So that'll be two episodes Friday. There'll be one in the morning and then one at night. Because I got to edit the one at night for my travel there and everything. Because I'm definitely going to go get me some Arrow's chicken. I need some Arrow's chicken. But just, you know, it's only right. I want to do that. And I want to see the bean too. The big bean, if y'all know what that is. I'll show you a picture of it or something in the description. Well, not in the description, but I'll show you a picture of it. So, I'm about to go make this spaghetti before I finish off my night. Still doing laundry. Not too much. I'm basically 80% done. I just got to tag put up a little bit more outerwear so I can make sure that I get everything. But from there, then I'm going to do my checklist. 
and then I should be good to go. I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to go to Shad Town. It's my first time going, so I'm kind of geek for real, for real. And out of everything before I do, I, I know I was about to leave and everything, but chase your dreams. Chase your fucking dreams. I don't care what the fuck everybody got to say, what your family got to say, what your mom got to say, what your dad got to say, what your baby's mom got to say, what your friends, like any, any associates got to say. Fuck what they think. Chase your fucking dreams. Just make sure that you implement that and you pay your bills. As long as you're paying your bills, you're above fucking water. And then after that, it gets even easier. So I'll see y'all in a minute.